Amen. We give God praise and glory for another opportunity in His presence again. We thank Him for the 19th day of our prayer and fasting meetings. Um, we want to appreciate God for all He has been doing. 18 days past, it has been by the grace of God. And for these 18 days, the word of God has always come fresh with power. It's not by mind, it's not by power, it's by the Spirit of God. I will give God thanks for what He has been doing. I want to appreciate God for the testimonies that have been coming. I want to appreciate God for the transformation that have been coming by His word. We give Him thanks and glory. Once again, I want to welcome everyone present joining us from wherever you're joining us from. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you, wherever you're joining us from. I want to assure you by the help of God's Spirit that today's meeting is going to count in your life for a lifetime. Amen to Jesus. I um, want to give God all the thanks for everything He has been doing for us. I want to appreciate everyone who has been joining, everyone that has been praying, everyone who has participated in the, in the meetings, those who have participated in the fasting. I want to appreciate God for your life. I want to say, the good Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Um, today is another glorious time with the Lord. And we trust God for His power like never before. We trust Him for His word to come in a strange dimension today. I believe you are ready for God's word. I'm very ready. And I'm excited about what God is going to teach to us today. Amen to Jesus. Amen. Let us lift up our voice and bless the name of the Lord. Give Him praise Jesus. and glory. Magnify His name. Glorify 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 His name. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. We worship you. We
he took his sons. Now, taking his son made him understand something that he didn't only just need a blessing, he needed his son to have the blessing of his father. Now, by right, the blessing was meant to be for him. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because uh, uh, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau, first generation. So the blessing was meant to be for the first generation. But Joseph understood the potency of the blessing and he knew that my father. I don't just only need him to bless me. I need him to bless my children. Are you getting what I'm saying? So he needed the blessing to be transgenerational. Now as a father, he could bless his children. Are you getting what I'm saying? But he knew that there was something about his father blessing his own children. So he desired the second generation blessing. Not just only the first generation, but what? The second generation blessing. And the father saw this act and went beyond it. Are you getting what I'm saying now? In the record of Hebrews, we see that it was only the blessing Jacob gave to, uh, gave to Joseph's children that were recorded. We saw that yesterday. Why? Because Joseph did something that was beyond the normal. Every son just received the blessing from his father. Jacob, his mother told him, your father is about to die. So, your father, your, sorry, your father, your father asked for your brother to bring venison. So, I'm prepared for you. He, wanted, he wants to bless your brother. I'd rather prepare the venison for you. Go and give it to your father. And then he will bless you. And, if, and, 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 and the mother said, and he told the mother, I said, what if my father blesses and um, causes me? And she said, if, if, if the cause be upon me, I stand as a substitute for you. Why? Because I'm the one who heard what I heard. It was me that the Lord told that the elder shall serve the younger. Your father did not hear that word. I'm the one who heard it. I'm the one who there was a rumbling in my stomach continuously in my room. Continue, and I went to meet God and I said, God, where am I to? And he told me, Your father did not hear it. So your father did not hear that word. He will not stop. He will not, he will not spoil the prophecy. I will do what it takes, even if I have to take a course. I will take a course for prophecy to manifest. So, uh, Rebecca was a type of Jesus. I've never said this before. I've never, I've never, I've just getting that revelation now. Rebecca, Galatians number 3, verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from what? From the cause of the Lord. Being made what? Cause for us. For his written cause is anyone that hang on the tree. Praise God forevermore. Now, this is not part of my teaching. Now, Christ was redeemed us from the cause by being what? By being made what? A cause for us. He became a substitute in the cause. He took the cause, so will not be cause. And Rebecca did the same thing. She told Jacob, let the cause be on me. I will be your substitute. I will take the cause, so you will not take So when Jacob was going, not just because she killed an animal and put the, the skin on his, on his body that made him confident, no. He was going with the confidence that my mother has already taken the cause for me. She's my substitute. So when that eyes, when that my father likes it or not, he must bless me. Why? Because what should have come as a cause on me? My mother has taken it. So he was going at this man. And, and, and Jacob was a revelation of a, a, a New Testament believer that knew what Jesus had done for him. Are you getting what I'm saying? He knew his mother had taken his place as a substitute of the cause. And so he was walking with that confidence. And my father cannot cause me. No, it's not possible. Why? Because my mother has already taken the cause. If there's any cause, I will mean, fall. It will fall on my mother. Even if my father gets angry and cause, it will not hit me. He will still bless me. My mother has taken the cause. So I go in the confidence that my mother has taken the cause. So when he stood, he was not jittering. He, because if he were to be jittering, the father would have sensed it. Though his eyes were very dim. You know, when the eyes get dimmer, the ears get more sensitive. And the hands get more sensitive. The, the other senses get more what? Alert. So if Jacob was afraid, shaking and jittering, the father would have sensed it that this is some, there's something wrong here. But he was confident. The confidence was, my mother has taken the cause. She is my substitute. So my father cannot cause me. Whether the man likes it or not, he will bless me. And he went to that confidence. What happened? The father blessed him. So Rebecca was a type of in Katua. She was a type of Jesus. I've never seen that before. I just got that here. She was a type of Jesus. And it was the confidence of the of the substitutionary work she did for Jacob that made Jacob go before the father. Same way.
way, it is the confidence of the substitution of Jesus did for us by being made cause for us. That's what gives us confidence to go before the Father. That the Father cannot cause us. We are causable by the Father again. Why? Because Jesus has already been made cause for us. Now, so, the, it's the first generation that goes to take the blessing from the Father. And you get what I'm saying? Now, that is a normal practice. That is a normal practice. Now, so, when, 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 when news came to Jacob, it's even Brothers, whosoever communicated that is about one of the brothers. He they knew that Jacob was the choice one. The children, Joseph was the choice one. If there's anybody that we collect blessing, he's the only one that has the right for we we don't have a right for blessing. He's the one that has the right. So that's why they tell you your father is sick. Oh, come and collect blessing. Oh. You are the one who has the right for blessing. We with what we have done, we have messed up big time. We don't have the right for blessing. So without the coming of Jacob, even the, 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 the blessings that came on the others would have not come. So, without the coming of Joseph, sorry, even the blessing that came on, on, on the others would have not come. But they knew that Joseph was the activator. Without Joseph, Father will not release anything. This man will just die and go with the blessings. Even with the causes he causes, we don't go with them. Is it not better he come out and tell us what is happening, what he has against us, and he goes, and we know, okay, what we are dealing with. See, the worst cause that can happen to a person is when the person does not know that it's caused. And when he doesn't know that there is a proclamation against him, times of life and nature will be fighting against him, and he doesn't know the cause of his, of his problem. The same way the problem is diagnosed, is half so. When the sickness is diagnosed, is half so. When you cannot diagnose the sickness, you are in confusion. So they said it's even better for the man to tell us why what he has in his heart for us. For years, this man has been keeping quiet, he's about to die. It's better for him to tell us what he has in his heart. So we know what to be dealing with. <laughs> So we know what to be dealing with. That's why it was based on that that Moses he said that Moses declared that said, let by shall be. Because he knew what they were dealing with. So let the man talk to us. Let him talk. That's why when he was the, uh, uh, rebuking Reuben, all of them were quiet. We know we are done bad. But we don't have the legal rights to make you open your mouth. The only person that has the legal rights to make you open your mouth is Jesus. That's why we said for him, Father is coming. And let him come and open it. When he comes, he will open mouth. He will not die with all those things inside his stomach. And uh, we know he will bless Joseph. We don't know what he will do to us. But anyhow, let him see talk. Let him talk. Because if we talk, we will know what we are expecting. And we will know how to start praying and to start aligning our lives. So it was expected that Joseph will come. You get what I'm saying? When the news came to Jacob that Joseph was coming, he was prepared for Jacob. For Joseph, sorry. It was expected that Joseph would come. But Joseph surprised his father. He rather came with his son. It was expected that first generation was meant to come alone and leave his, his children at home. And say, so, yeah, daddy, bless me. But this time around, he came with his son. When Jacob saw the sons of Joseph, he said, hey, this guy understands the principles of life. He doesn't the blessing on his head. He knows that what I carry is transgenerational. So he wants to impact even his children. Ah, this man, you know, you understand principles that nobody understands. That is why it was the two blessings that were recorded by Hebrews. Why? Because Joseph operated in a principle that even his, his mates did not operate. He didn't come to be blessed. He came for transgenerational blessing. Yeah. That's, that's why it's only two of them. If you remember, it's only two of them that were recorded. Right? Because if their father, he, he, he operated a principle that his, his brothers did not understand. Even the generation did not understand. So he entered into a, a transgenerational operation of principles. Even his father did not understand that principle. His grandfather did not understand it. His great grandfather did not understand it. How did you know this principle, Joseph? That revelation is what made Hebrews say, I beg these are the little who are blessed. <laughs> the others, <laughs> we don't know what happened to them. They gave them what? But these are the people because number one, it is Joseph that activated blessing. Number two, he didn't come to be blessed as a first generation. He came for transgenerational blessing. Principles. This principle is the reason why God, this is the only blessing we call out. Are we together? And the blessing were not. Plenty words, but they were happy because of the principles that Joseph understood. Praise God forever more. And so we discovered that um, um, it, it was only the, uh, the blessing of Ephraim when I said that was recorded. This was 
um, significant, not basically because other blessings were irrelevant or because the first becoming the last incident was repeated, uh, was repeated, but because uh, we learned that this was not because uh, um, um, Jacob re uh, uh, corrected um, the revelation that Joseph had amen to Jesus by his blessing. Praise God forevermore. Now, furthermore, the, the reason for the action of the writer of Hebrews are, uh, are, 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 by, by just calling only the blessing of uh, Ephraim and Manasseh was that Jacob did not just see Manasseh and Ephraim. Praise God. That's it. Manasseh and Ephraim. They, they were initially Manasseh and Ephraim. Later he changed it to Ephraim and Manasseh. He didn't just see them as his grandchildren. Watch this. He didn't see them just as his grandchildren, but he saw them as his first generation. <laughs> he saw them as his first generation. So he adopted them as his first generation, blessed them, and named tribes after them. We see this in Genesis 48, verse 5 to 6. Look at me, it says, And now the two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, which were born unto thee in the this is Jacob speaking to his son, Joseph, which were born unto thee in the land of Egypt, before I came unto thee into Egypt, are mine. As Reuben and Simeon, they shall be mine. So he actually adopted Joseph's sons to be his first generation. <laughs> and the prophet says, And thy issue which thou begotten after them shall be thine. So he collected Joseph's children. He said, This is your your first generation, I've adopted them as my first generation. Anyone you give birth to after that, after Ephraim, Manasseh, anyone you give birth to, they are your own. But these first two, I've adopted them. If you go for that, you can spot that Joseph did the same thing too. He adopted the children of his, uh, of his, of, of, of one of his sons. I get what I'm saying. Say, so anyone after them, they shall be done. And shall be called after the name of their brethren in their inheritance. So he, 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 when, 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 when this children came, he looked and he said, My eyes is a day. But I, I never knew I would see it. I'm paraphrasing, told Joseph, Joseph, I never knew I would see you again. But now I'm so glad that not only am I seeing you, I am also seeing your children. So as I'm seeing your children, you know what? I have adopted them. Anyone after them, they can be your own. So you know that was, they were not called Ephraim Joseph. They were called Ephraim Jacob. They were not called Manasseh Joseph. They were called what? Manasseh Jacob. He took them. A lack of water. What you see that action was because now Joseph did not just come alone. If Joseph had come alone, Jacob would have not done that action. But when he came with his sons, Jacob said, This boy, there is something that no wonder you are my favorite. You have always not been behaving like others. You have been practicing principles that are beyond your age and time. Even in what you are doing, I did not do it. I, I, I understand how you get what you get. And because of this, I adopt your children. In other words, they are from my bowels. So the blessing I'm to release on the first generation, I am releasing it on the second generation. In other words, what you are meant to carry, I'm distributing it to your children. So they will carry the weights of blessings that their uncles carried. <laughs> they will carry the weight of blessings that you are meant to, you alone are meant to carry. And Elijah wanted to die, he came and called the king, and he told the king, he said, Come and shoot arrows. The king shot one, two, three, and he stopped. He said, Oh, and Elijah had the anger of Elijah. He said, Oh, what is the problem? I thought you would keep shooting. You will shoot as many times until you finally destroy your enemies. But you shot only three times. He said, If that be the case, you only have to drive your enemy three times. And he walked away in anger. The king was almost happy, confused. Which kind of prophet is this one? He didn't tell me how many times to shoot. Me, I only shot three times. At least I tried to shoot. And now the prophet is angry with me. And he walked in me. Uh, but I think the king should have been going for that. I beg, prophet, I beg, stay now. 
are very let me shoot. Is it not shoot? I don't understand is it prophet not be angry. And that's why the king is all the time. Pride that don't have sense. Prophet don't no, prophet don't no, vex. If prophet why you did vex? Why you talking the power going like this? Prophet, this is not a hard matter. Is it not shoot? I can shoot for what is that I'm be trained archer. Our work is to shoot prophet. When he passes that road, he will shoot the prophet and start going. Well, I say, I'm tired. He said, well, don't be tired. He said, don't shoot. I'm still shooting. I, I can continue shooting for the after I don't have work to do now. But my work is shooting and I've finished all the arrows in his spare. What was he doing then? The Bible says, children are very of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is a reward. He said, like arrows in the hands of strong men, so are in the hands of others, so are the children of the strong. I'm paraphrasing. Now what does that mean? When Elisha wanted to transmit his anointing, when Elijah wanted to transmit, he divided, divided it into three people, Elisha, Jehu, and Azrael. Elisha, Elisha was for the ministry, the prophetic ministry. Jehu was for the political ministry. Azrael for the economic ministry. So now when Elisha wanted to transmit his anointing, those songs of prophets that were following, they were not serious points. And now as fast as was the road that you have been following for how long, still you are still crying for borrowed acts. But right by this time, you are supposed to be calling acts out, acts head out for water. But you are still crying for acts head. Okay, drop food and make these guys they want to grow. So when it was time to go, he looked and said, These songs of prophets, they only know how to uh, trouble me and then ask for me to bring that acts head. They don't know how to carry anointing. Where do I transmit anointing? Okay, to bring your arrows. Children are what like arrows. So the arrows were prophetic for the for generations. And he said, every arrow you shoot is one generation. Let me transmit my anointing into generations. So the king did not understand and he stopped at three generations. Elisha said, if you are no, you should have continued shooting for generations. So I can keep transmitting anointing into generations. This was the same thing that that Joseph understood. So when he was coming to meet his father, he didn't come to meet his father for a blessing on his head. No, father already successful. Transmit this thing to my generations. Let them carry it. I need my generation to carry what you carry, Papa. And when his father saw it, the father said, Hey, this guy has brought me venison. In my time, I brought my father food venison. In his time, he brought me generational venison. That's the difference between Joseph, the difference between Jacob and Isaac. Isaac was just food conscious. Give me venison that which I love. I give me food, let me eat. If so, you have been giving venison, give me venison. But Jacob knew that his venison was not food. My father would have missed it by blessing my brother because of venison. I will not bless on the grounds of venison. I will bless on the revelation of generational impact. So, what did he say? When Joseph brought his son, he said, This boy understand. Hey, Joseph, stay out of the picture. Let me put this thing into generations. And he released the blessing into generations. Why? Because Joseph understood that when you impact generations, you have secured the future. And he came to impart the region. Papa have already succeeded. What is remaining? I have secured you people. I have succeeded. Is this children that need to succeed now? Release it on them. Father, your blessing is what has kept me even in the, in the 13 years of trouble. Even with Potiphar's house to bring from, from pits to Potiphar's house to prison. Your blessing kept me. Father, and your blessing is more important to my generation than to me now. Release it on them. The father said, this is the kind of venison. This is my, the venison I want. I don't need food venison. I need generational venison. And he didn't hesitate to pour it. And he said, not only would I adopt them, they will become my first generation. I, I give them the rights of a first generation. <laughs> Praise God forevermore. And this was the reason why the children of Joseph enjoyed what their uncles, some of their uncles enjoyed. In fact, they didn't, their uncles did not even enjoy what they did because even with the blessing that the father gave their uncles, there was command here, command there. They have done too many trouble and even the blessing was not with the whole heart. But these ones, they were fresh, no trouble at all. No problem, they are not giving their father. He just poured new, new fresh blessing on them. Without any, any command, any food stop, any condition, he released it. Because the father understood what generations meant. 
and a grandfather understood what the real Venice was. I called some young men who I was mentoring the ministry then, and I sat down in my house. And I told them, I said, see this house, the Lord has built me a house, a beautiful house. But I told him, this is not where my fulfillment lies. The first time one came into the house, he was out, he opened his mouth. I said, this is not where my fulfillment lies. Did he understand me one dot? I said, my fulfillment lies in souls. Impacting people. My mother told me years ago, she said, she did, about 10, 20 years ago, if not, he said, wherever you go, reproduce yourself. That has been a driving force in me. So it always haunts my heart when I said I'm trying to pour myself into people, especially this young generation that don't understand nothing. Ask them, do they not care they tell they don't know? Sweet people saw they don't know. They don't know nothing. This generation is just so, just so disdeluded. And I try my best to pour into them. Why? Because the real fantasy is generations. It's not money. It's not food. I am not Isaac. I am a Jacob. I point to generations. Let me not say that. Although Joseph did not have any tribe name after him, any tribe name after him directly, he was recorded as a hero of faith. Praise God. Now, this was because of two reasons, or three reasons rather. Number one, he understood the power of the next generation. He understood the power of the next generation. So he didn't come, Jacob, just said he not had the conference without a blessing. And his father's spirit clicked in you. <laughs> That's how he said, told Jacob, Joseph, your father is sick. And told Jacob, your son is coming. And then when Joseph was coming, he came with his son. He said, this is my son, he has sense. So this boy will not come for me to bless him. He came for generational blessing. I give it to him. He has understanding. So he was called the hero of faith. Because, number one, he understood the power of generational blessing. Not me now, my generation. Men who live for themselves die to be nobody. But men who live for their generation die as heroes. <laughs> we have a generation today that is selfish. I have met young people in my life. I remember once I was talking to a young man was talking to me, then I just was some few years ago preparing the ministry. As I was teaching him and talking to him, he said, Pastor, I want you to mentor me. I said, I'm tired of mentoring young people. I'm tired of mentoring you people. You people don't hear. You don't hear. And I began, I began to give him some, um, some, some wisdom and counsel. But I said, see, it's not like I don't want to mentor you people, but you people don't hear. Young people, you don't hear nothing. I remember there was a, 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 a young man who was in my university. He came to my house once. He, he, he passed the night in my house. He was preparing for his wedding. He passed the night in my house. Then I was still building, and um, the project had not been completed to the, to the state very work, and even a bit where they need. When I entered into the house, not completed, without windows, without toilet, I entered there. And I was inside there with building. And he, when he came there, he told me something. Then after that, I took him to the church. The church was still completed to who were building the two parishes. And he told me something. He said, Chindi, any young man in your church who doesn't listen to you, I'm sorry for him. And when he told me, my heart sunk. Why? Because I knew that the young men in my church were not listening to me. One of them sent me a message a while ago on WhatsApp. He said, Pastor, is our ministry now in this location? I say yes. I said, why are you using this number? I said, based on what I am now in Italy. I say, wow. All right. Hope you are reading your Bible. Now. That's what I ask you. Hope you are studying your Bible. Now. He say yes. I said, right. You know, after that, that number has come. So maybe he has changed from Italy to somewhere else. But these are people I was teaching them the principles of the kingdom. I remember this one, but when I taught him, I said, understand the principle of, of, of tithing. He said, Pastor, if I start tithing now, Will I get with less than getting money than I say if you if you start planting now will you get a less than that? And they say, Pastor, okay, 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 okay. I was teaching them the principles of the kingdom, but they were not listening to me. They were not listening. And I told the young man, I don't have a problem with young people, though, but the problem is that you don't listen. Most of them, they, most of them they batter their life in their youthful age, in their old age, and now begin to regret. That's the problem. So Joseph, Joseph understood the problem, the, 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 the power of generational impact. Amen to Jesus. All right, he was called a hero of faith, not just because he, he saved the world and his people from famine at that time, which 
should have been the reason many of us will give for him to be called what a hero of faith. Rather, he was called a hero of faith for three reasons. Number one, he understood the power of generational impact. Father, it's not about me now. It's about my next generation. Men who can understand that it's not about them, it's about the next generation. They are always enlisted in the heroes. We did see that Joseph did the sick and raised the dead. Yes, all we know about him is that he saved the world in the time of famine. Yes, that would have been enough to enlist him in the heroes of faith. But that was not the reason why the book of Hebrews enlisted him in the heroes of faith. I get what I'm saying. The book of Hebrews Hebrews is the hero of faith for two reasons. I'm just adding the third reason, which is what? He understood the power of generational impact. And so he lived for his generation, not for himself. Father, I'm blessed. If you bless me, now what am I doing with it? Give it to my children. But we live in a generation that instead of them saying, Father, give it to my children, they'll say, Father, give it to me. From me, I will not give it to my children. But I want to know that I still know how to give it. I will give it to my children. But let me tell you something. By the time they give it to you, by the time you are giving it to your children, maybe you would have exhausted a good portion of it still. Because you don't have to worry it. But there are some things you don't need again that your children they will need more. So he said, Father, give it to them. I live my life. What is remaining? I'm already a successful man. Father, let me this success more than I need now. He understood the power of generations. And he put it to work. And his father said, A man who understands this has given me the best medicine of all. And why was he enlisted in the rules of faith in the book of Hebrews? Two things. We may not see these things as heroic, but God saw them as what? Heroic. What are the two things? Hebrews chapter 11 verse 22 tells us. It says, By faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing. That's why I titled it the departing. Made mention of the departing of the children of Israel. And gave commandment concerning his bones. Two things. He made mention of the departing of the children of Israel. Number two, he gave commandment concerning his bones. These things may not sound big, is that See, what people have been studying the heroes of faith, I've seen that the things that God, the, the basis of which God called them heroes, they are not what you call the normal things. They're not what you call the normal things. But you see, that's why we must understand the mindset of God when we are dealing with God. Because some of the things that people call faith, great faith, in God's sight, they may not be great faith. As one of the things people call little or no faith in God's sight, those are great faith. Yeah. And that's why I like this study. It has been opening my eyes and it's making me more excited in ministry. Yeah, I'm getting more excited. That even when people are saying that I'm not doing anything, what is this guy doing? What is he doing? What is he up to? What kind of ministry are they doing? What kind of... Even when people are giving those kind of comments, these teachings are giving me understanding. And let me tell you, it is God's faith. He is the one that determines whether it is great or not. It's not our own. Yes. <laughs> so stop working days on people's judgment. I get what I'm saying. So two things. He made mention of the departing of the children of Israel. Number two, he gave commandment concerning the post. I'm going to be talking briefly on he made mention concerning the departing of the children of Israel. And uh, tomorrow we'll talk about he gave commandment concerning his bones. Now, he made mention concerning the departing of the children of Israel. This makes us understand that Joseph knew what God told his great grandfather, Abraham. He knew what God told his great grandfather Abraham. He knew what God told Abraham will happen to his future generation. God told Abraham, which is Joseph's great grandfather, something will happen to his future generation. And Joseph knew it. Let's look at scripture. Genesis 15, verse 13 to 14. It says, And he said unto Abraham, No of a shorty that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not yours. So they didn't enter. See, the Israelites did not enter into Egypt by error or by mistake or by famine. No, they entered by prophecy. Yes. No, 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 no. See, some of you don't understand. There is even an Egypt you entered into and you are saying, God, what did I do wrong? What kind of error? What attracted me? What mistake did I do that brought me? No! It was by prophecy. When as a family we entered into our Egypt, when we entered into Egypt, there was something that brought us in. It looked 
looked like a famine that was being solved. A, a solution to famine that brought us to that Egypt. And at a point in time, we, we ourselves began to say, God, what happened? But listen to me. When the problem started, we were praying another prayer. And then the Lord revealed to us that this is Egypt. You are here to collect gold and silver. And we changed prayer. Because prophecy told on us that we didn't enter that land by error. We didn't enter that land because of famine. We didn't enter that land by mistake. We entered it by prophecy. And when we prayed the manifestation of prophecy, two and a half years we were praying. And my wife we stand in the place of prayer six hours a day in tongues. When we finish praying, I wake up by 4 a.m. and I lift up my hands, go outside, lift up my hands and begin to speak to the forces of nature and call them to walk on my behalf. Two and a half years, Pharaoh fell and our great substance was given to us and we came out. It was by prophecy God had told Abraham he says what? He says they shall be stranger in a land that is not yours and shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge and afterward shall they come out with great substance. Joseph knew what God told his great grandfather. I'm not talking about his grandfather now. I'm not talking about his father. His great grandfather. <laughs> That guy was not normal. He was not living in his time. He was living in a time far before him and far ahead of him. He was living for 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 four generations for 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 four generations before and four generations after him. <laughs> it four generations before him, four hundred years after him. That's people of living. He was in the present, but he was partaking to his great grandfather, and he was fast forwarding to his fourth generation after him. <laughs> so he was not living in the realm of his mates. That's why he was always thinking the way he was thinking. That's why he was behaving the way. That's why his father. That's, his father looked at him, take coat of many colors. You are all no man. He was watching that and he said, I see, I see, I saw all the sheep bow down and my sheep too. The father said, I tell you that your brother will. The father did not talk. Then I said, I saw the sun, the moon, the red star, but the father said, Are you saying that me, your brother, and your brother will bow before you? Say, but the father took note of his word. Why? He knew that this guy was not living in his time. He was living before his time and after his time. Normal people either live in their time or after their time. But this guy was living before his time, in his time and after his time. He was not normal. He was not normal. <laughs> and he said that one is not a man of it. <laughs> I'll listen to uh, uh, a, 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 a minister of the gospel yesterday. I slept listening to the guy's teaching. We just found him on, on our cable channel. And I've heard about him before. But the other thing was, I did this follow. But for a week, for a while, we've been following his teaching. And this time, he will teach and teach and he know what to stop. I was sleeping off and I was still listening. And I feel fresh when I wake up late listening to him. And, I, and I, as I was listening to my scholar, many of the things I'm teaching today is what the man is teaching. Once I talk from last year, late last year, this year, it's the same thing the man is teaching. And I was beginning at that and Pastor began to tell me, ah, you always complaining. Why am I different? Why is it that my mission? He said, This is the reason I've always been telling you that you are not teaching what your mates are teaching. So what fathers have been teaching 30 years before my time? That's what I'm teaching. So that's why my ministry is not normal. Don't be angry with it. It's not normal. Is it partaken and fast forwarded ministry to in present? <laughs> so Joseph was a man who knew history. He maintained the ancient landmarks. He and believed in the potency, authenticity, and infallibility of the word of God spoken in the time past. He knew history. He didn't just know it. He, he maintained the ancient landmarks. And he then believed in the potency, the authenticity, and the infallibility of the word that God spoke to his great grandfather. He believed in it. He won't speak if he doesn't believe. The Bible says we believe, so we speak. He, he believed in it. This thing will happen. Why did he believe in it? I don't know. Go and ask yourself. 
But he knew that there was something about his gift. When Jacob was telling his children, you see, we serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Ruben did not understand. That's how he was misbehaving. So I was crying. When was, the father was teaching them, he was going to, he was eyeing his father's concubine. Was, Judah did not understand. Some of them understood. They didn't understand what the father said. The father said, Our God is Yahweh. He is the God of Abraham. Our, my, Abraham, my grandfather, your great grandfather. He is the God of Isaac, my father, your grandfather. And he's my, he appeared to me. They didn't understand. But Joseph, he was catching the man. Tell him, go and ask his father, tell me more about this God of Abraham. And he says, I, this God, he told your great grandfather that his generation will be foreigners in a strain. I say, serious. Say, he said, but they will come out with great stuff. I say, when did he say that happen? He said, it will happen. But he said, they will stay there for 400 years. Joseph believed it with everything. It's obvious that women did not ask for that information. It's obvious that the others they were just taking that story, story, story. But Joseph did not take history as story. He took it as revelation. He took it as what keeps the, their destiny intact. I cannot say it. As a result of this, he was sure that this prophet, this promise of God to his great grandfather will manifest. Even though it may not be in his time. But to manifest. So Joseph's prophetic mention of their departing from Egypt was based on the knowledge he gathered from history. It was not theoretical, it was a knowledge from history. This makes us understand that without the knowledge of history, there can be no prophecy. <laughs> I prophesy, can I prophesy? What history are you prophesying from? Prophecy is not present, prophecy is history. I prophesy, can I prophesy? What is the one knowledge of history are you prophesying from? That is what differentiated Joseph's prophecy from other prophecy. It was based on the knowledge, the understanding, the revelation, the belief, the authenticity of history he prophesied. So every prophetic word we speak now was already spoken by Yahweh in history. Why do I say so? Scripture makes us understand that. Isaiah 46, verse 10. It says, Declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. He declares the end from the beginning. The beginning is history. The end is future. We are the ones in present. Yahweh declares the future from the history. And you cannot say it. He declares prophecy from history. So, in every prophecy must be the product of Yahweh's words spoken in history. If it is not the product of that, then the stories is not prophecy. <laughs> Uh, this makes us understand that prophecy is simply declaring in the present the decisions Yahweh made in history. Prophecy is declaring in the present the decisions that Yahweh made in the history without consulting us. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why God does not need our proofers for his word to my family. God. He, he made those decisions before we were, before we're created. When he told Moses, I, I, I will destroy these people. Moses said, no, don't destroy them. If you destroy them, Moses was actually advising God, Yahweh. He said, if you destroy them, they will say you brought them out of Egypt, but you could not take care of them. Yahweh said, you don't understand. I have declared this thing. I have made this decision in history. It must happen in the future. I'm only telling you in the present. No problem. Watch and see. Yahweh yeah, said, okay, no problem, no, no, no problem, no problem. The Bible said he repented, no problem. But for you to know that I made this decision in history, watch and see. The same people, the same people, <laughs> the same people, suddenly a battle came. Moses told them, don't go and fight. God did not tell the fight. He said, Moses, what is your problem? Are you the one that is fighting? We are in fight. We like time, I'm going to fight. We say, I'm dead, don't go and fight. God said, you don't understand. God says, you don't understand. This is already a default program setting. <laughs> if a decision is, I only give you the privilege of giving information of what history has already 
done. What I've already done in this room, I did this I already gave the prayer, and you say, I'm, 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 I'm not nice. So no problem, I will keep quiet. <laughs> Don't worry. He will see what I decided in history. Play out in your presence. At the end of the day, Moses plead dead, plead dead. Don't go. They say we must go. They didn't know that they were under remote control. The decision of their way in history had already been enacted. <laughs> they must fulfill it. A lot of them went to the war and perished. God said, Moses, do you understand that? If I'm telling you something, it's not because I'm looking for your advice. I make my decision without your consultation. I only get you involved because I just want you to know that you are my partner. But I don't need your advice. So. Are you seeing it now? When I said these people with that, you think I didn't want to, I, I decided that you can only were still there. The Bible says, God, God does not remember our sins. So. But the Bible says, God, for the, what, God told Moses, say, for this ten times, have these people rebelled against for God to be counting one that means their rebellion was hyper he counted from one he said this ten times Moses, I decided the history I only gave you information because you're my friend but since you say I gave information and information is ready for you I will not talk any further you will see history manifest So prophecy is what? Simply declaring in pre the present decisions of Yahweh made in history. This makes us understand that without knowledge of the decisions of Yahweh in history, which is found in his word, that is the word of God, no one can prophesy. Are you not know saying? Without knowledge of the decisions of Yahweh found in his word, no one can prophesy. It's not by shouting, can I prophesy? It's not by shouting, go deeper. It's not by shouting, prophet, prophesy. No! We are talking about decisions of Yahweh in history. If you don't know these decisions, you cannot prophesy nothing. That's the reason why some people, they are prophet, prophet lied to them and they don't even know. Because they don't know the decisions of Yahweh. <laughs> when we prophesy, we're only declaring what Yahweh has long settled. Are you getting what I'm saying? <laughs> So Joseph was a hero of faith because he knew the decision of Yahweh revealed to his great grandfather Abraham. He believed in it and he spoke it. Thus he prophesied. Simple. Can I prophesy? I cannot answer you yes or no. If you know the decisions of Yahweh concerning your life, as found in scriptures, child of God, you can prophesy. And child of God, if you know them too well and you believe in them, you understand them, you have become a prophet to yourself. So you can prophesy. You can capture you can predict the happenings of your tomorrow because of the revelation of the history and the decisions of your week in this world. This was what Joseph simply did. And what? He prophesied. So Joseph was a hero of faith. Why? Because he was a prophet. <laughs> that was a simple reason. It's a simple reason. It's a simple reason. It's a simple reason. It's not simple. It's a simple reason. It's a simple reason. It's a simple reason. And you know the funny thing? We are also enlisted in that group. Now let me understand something. In Joseph's time, there was no Torah. They only handed verbal uh, 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 history, verbal, uh, verbal to their generations. But Joseph held the history and kept it in his heart. Like David said, I want to die in my He kept the history in his heart and he believed it. He knew the authenticity of it. And it was on the grounds of that he was a prophet. What about you that God has compiled the history of all his decisions and has given it to you? And you are not to And you are still looking for a prophet to prophesy for you. You are confused. You don't understand what you are carrying. This is the decisions of Yahweh in history made available to you so you can stand as a prophet for your destiny. So you can stand as a prophet and make declarations. When Joseph was declaring to them, he was not children. He was not shaking. He was not confused. He was not afraid. He believed in the decision that Yahweh made and gave to his great grandfather. And on that faith, he decreed. He made the decree. 
declaration and he said he told them to see when I'm going carry my book because this thing may not happen in my time but one thing for sure will happen child of God Joseph had faith in the decision of Yahweh that was handed over to him by his father and it came by oral oral handover there was no written handover but Yahweh took time to inspire men to make sure that they write decisions so they will not be forgotten issues when history is being handed over some of the time there is a there, there's, there's an oral mistake where some of the people that hand over make some mistake in their communication but Yahweh made sure that this thing was retained so there will be no mistake the infallibility is intact so that you can have this decision in history child of God you have no reason not to prophesy if you are not prophesying, if you are not a prophet, it's because you are not checking out the history of Yahweh's decisions. You don't know them. That's why you are looking for somebody to tell you. You are looking for somebody to tell you about what God has spoken concerning you. That's a problem, child of God. He wrote it for you. He, he made his decision written for you so you can be able to enact them in your life. Every time you enforce the history, of your way, you are vanted in the place of the prophets. Every time you enforce scriptures, you are just you are just acted as a prophet. Who is a prophet? Everyone who enforces the word of God in his life. I'm a prophet over my life. I'm a prophet over my family. I'm a prophet over my children, my wife and my children. I, 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 I wake up at night, I lay hands on my wife and my children, and I prophesy over them, I decree over them. My children, I decree over them every, every at least five days a week, I lay hands on them, I decree them. Before one prophet, we prophesy like to them, and we first prophesy to them. And we align their destinies with the history decisions of your way. So that no prophet can come and prophesy lie to them. <laughs> Joseph was a prophet. Though it was a, an oral transmission, he kept it in, in his memory, in his heart. I won't forget this. See, you have a better opportunity. Yours is not just oral, it is written. As I went, Jesus wanted to deal with them, what did he do? It is written. The Torah Jesus said, I have a better privilege than Joseph. To last, it is written. And you see, some of the times, even for us to open this written word is a problem. Some of us, we go to church, we fold it with newspaper, so people will not see the, the history decisions of their way. Do you know what you're carrying? Hey! The decisions of your way made in history concerning you. You are ashamed of it, you wrap it in newspaper. That's what the person I'm not ashamed of the gospel. This is the history decision of your I'm not ashamed of it. You wrap it with paper. So we only open it on Sunday morning, toss it. Hey, it's still dead. The history is no wonder you keep looking for people to prophesy for you. Because you have closed the decisions of your way concerning your life. I'm not against. Technological devices, phones, tablets. But child of God, there's a level we go to where we want to open the paper, the leaves. We want to mark it and mark it and mark it. We want to mark it. Why do we mark it and mark it? So that we can go back again and enforce it. So we can prophesy. It's amazing that I'm talking to prophets and many of them don't know they are prophets. Why was Joseph a prophet? History decision declared it manifested. Why are you a prophet? The same history decision has been given to you. Declare it and be a what? Prophet. It will manifest. How many of us are ready to step into the role of the prophets? How many of us are ready to step into the role of the prophets? How many of us are ready to the prophet of our lives? See, you, you, they may say you're not a prophet to the nations, you're not a prophet to the family, but you are a prophet to yourself. How many of us are to step into the office of prophets over my life? <laughs> now, before we step, before we enter into the realms of prayers, I want to just pray for as many of those who don't know Jesus as a Lord and personal Savior. 
He want to make this decision. Say, did not say this prayer to me. Please, I encourage you to do that. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I know that I'm a sinner, but I know that you died and resurrected for me. And on Calvary Street, you shed your blood and took away my sins. Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I make you my Lord and personal Savior. Come into my life. Rule and reign over my life. And I choose to serve and follow you all the days of my life in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for every person who has made this decision. Thank you for receiving them in the beloved. And I thank you for the grace to serve you and follow you. Is released on them in the name of Jesus. How many of us are ready to stand in the place of prophets this morning. Uh, or this hour, wherever you are watching from. I'm never sorry to stand in the place of prophets. Uh, now you are praying with me saying in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. I receive grace. I receive grace. To search the word of God. To search the word of God. Fine. Fine. I know. I know. God's decision for me. God's decision for in me. History, in history. Believe in them. Believe in them. And declare them. Since I found that word and I did eat them, and I went joy and rejoicing to my soul. Shanana na matua tata kata, si puto sa hata na bata si akata si kata ba, eti kata kato kudo 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 shibete kete isha. Say show me wonders from thy word. Say kano say kana bata sa tata ba. Everything that makes you honor with the word of God. Everything that makes you far from the word of God, everything that makes you spend time doing any other thing, but you cannot invest one minute into studying the word. Attack that force is an anti-prophecy force. In the name of Jesus, I stand on the authority of the name of Jesus. And I stop the operation of that force in your life in the name of Jesus. Yanatia Pokota. That force that makes you keep looking for what God has given you in scriptures. In the mouth of men, Yabila Patunda Katapusa Tayata, that force, I decree, I stop this oppression in your life in the name of Jesus. There's somebody, the Lord will have me tell you that He wants to paint a picture of your life to you. Now, this is not me very saying the picture of your life will be painted from scriptures. He says, This is what He wants to do to you. He wants you to open scriptures. He says, As He opens scriptures, the word of God will begin to come out as pictures to you. You will literally be seeing the pictures. You'll be seeing them. You'll be seeing them. You'll be seeing them. The word will be coming as pictures to you, and you will literally be seeing the pictures. And He says, with these pictures, you have clarity on what to do in every situation in life. He says, if you come out, and I'm not so much about that, as you open scriptures and then you begin to study, he says, they will come out, the words will come out as pictures to you, you'll be seeing them. For that person, he says, it will, they will come out as movies, and I'm not coming out to her. They will be playing as movies to you. For that person, he says, they will come out as puzzles. And these puzzles will begin to fit with each other. Amen. And you will know with clarity what to do. Amen. Three categories of people. It's 
says, the Lord says, I should tell you, you have to go to the study of the world. He said, if you go to the study, when you go to the study of the world, my own will come out as pictures for you. And these pictures, you begin to see them and you will know what to do. You will get clarity. The second, the second category of people, he says, this, my word as you begin to study, they will come out as movies. So you begin to watch movies. Amen. And the quarter, you will know with clarity what to do. And the third category, he says, my word will come out as puzzles. And these puzzles will fit themselves. Amen. And you will know exactly what to do. Says the Spirit of God. These are three categories of people. And as you begin to, as you begin to obey and to pick up scriptures, I tell you, how come are you operating in this in a prophetic dimension? That's the operation of the word that the Lord is going to give it to you. You will know what to do. They will come as pictures, they will come as movies, and they will come as puzzles fitting themselves up. Three categories of people. And as I'm talking to you now, these three categories of people, the anointing of God is coming on your eyes. Like a heat sensation on your eyes, and not too silver and tassa. Like a heat, and not too clever tasha. Like a heat sensation on your eyes. You are feeling the anointing of God. Like a heat sensation on your eyes. You are feeling it. That's just a sign to show you that you are one of those in one of these categories. Now, you will not know the category you fall into until you open scriptures. When you open scriptures, you will see the category you fall into. And that is how God is going to be speaking to you. That's how God is going to be speaking to you. That's how God is going to be speaking to you. So he says, you have to glue yourself to the word. He says, that's how I keep speaking to you. At no sipalata. That's how I keep speaking to you. By the word of God, the Lord is ending confusions. Amen. Confusions. And I mean confusions. I mean long confusions. And I'm so angry with that sabata. And so there's somebody, you have been so confused. So you don't know what to do. You, are, you don't even know what to do. You are so confused. The Lord will have me telling you, I have your answer here. And it says, as you tell you, if you don't pray in the Spirit, you can receive the power of the Holy Spirit and with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, the infinite of the Holy Spirit, the speaking in other tongues. As I'm saying to you, you just release, open up yourself and you receive it now. It says, what you should do is invest some time praying in tongues. And it says, open my word. He says, they will be, as you open my word, you see that it's like a, 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 a veil just lifts. Clarity will come. Clarity will come. Clarity will come. Clarity. For somebody, the Lord, I, I, I see you walking on a straight road. On a straight road. Just on a straight road, you're walking. You're walking. And the Lord will have me tell you that very soon you will get to the end of that road. And after the end, you will not know the next step to take. He says, but the next step is in my word. He says, you will not know the next direction to take. The next step, the next step is in my word. He says, because the road is actually a straight road. There is no bend to your right. There is no bend to your left. As you get to the end, it's the end. And so when you get there, there is no road here. There is no road here. There is no road here. The only road is back. And God says, his soul does not take delight in those who draw back. And, and the book of Hebrews says, and the text says, we are not of them who draw back to perdition. God says, I, would, I, don't, I, I don't want you going back. He says, you have to go forward. He says, but the only way forward is by the world. He says, I'm the one who creates roads in the wilderness and seas in the desert. He says, as you take my word, you will see a road created for you by my word. There's a grace for declarations upon somebody now. Yeah. As you declare the word, you'll be seeing it happen in your life speedily. Yeah. Instant manifestation of the word concerning your life is dropping upon somebody now. So you, as you declare the word of God concerning life, you just see it happen instantly. Instant. And the Lord says, as you tell you, it will metamorphose from happening to your life to happening to the lives of others. So you begin to declare the word into people's life and it begin to happen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want to pray for those who want to, who are believing God for healing, miracles, signs, and wonders of any kind. I want you to release your faith, and I release my faith. I will put our faith together. I will, I will believe God for miracles right now. Now, so just release your faith in the name of Jesus. I cause sicknesses and diseases. 
I cause tumors, I cause lumps, I cause pains, I cause swellings, I cause inflammations, I cause terminal diseases to their root in the name of Jesus. I cast out the spirit of infirmity in the name of Jesus. I cause paralysis in the name of Jesus. I cause I, I, I cause lameness in the leg. I cause the spirit of darkness. I cause the spirit of deafness. I cause the mute spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I cause cancers, I cause hernias. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I cause piles. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I decree healings in bodies right now. In the name of just everybody believing God for a breakthrough, I call for your breakthrough. I decree your doors that the Lord has meant to be open for you, they are open now. And the doors that are meant to be shut for you, they are shut now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I decree supernatural turnarounds. I decree manifestations of the mighty acts of God in your life. I decree so. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Once again, thank you for your time. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Grace to you.